It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, and uh, this is 5.45 Live. Joe, what do we got on deck here tonight? All right, today, Governor Shumlin takes on Rush Limbaugh. The Women's Film Festival kicks off, and Daryl Pillsbury joins us live in the studio to talk about the Wyndham County Heat Fund. All that and more coming up, and remember, we do it all in 15 minutes, uh, so make sure you stick with us. I can't remember in recent history hearing such a degrading, despicable response to a woman who was fighting for her own reproductive rights. Welcome back to this uh, March 9th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. Uh, that, if I can get my close up here, uh, is Governor Shumlin talking about comments made last week by conservative radio personality Rush Limbaugh after he denounced Georgetown law student Sandra Fluke as a slut for her support of President Obama's new policy on contraception coverage. What does it say about the college co ed Susan Fluke? who goes before a congressional committee and essentially says that she must be paid to have sex. What does that make her? It makes her a slut, right? Makes her a prostitute. She wants to be paid to have sex. Two days after the wildly controversial comments, Limbaugh took it a step further, demanding access to videos of Fluke engaging in sexual behaviors as a result of the proposed legislation. We're going to have to pay for this. Now, we want something in return, Ms. Fluke, and that would be the videos of all this sex posted online so we can see. At this week's press conference, Governor Shumlin called the recent debate a relic of the past, saying that candidates for the Republican nomination needed to focus their attention elsewhere. I'm a little surprised that as a nation we're having a conversation that I thought happened when I was a little teeny kid about whether women in this country should have access to contraception. I thought that one happened a long time ago. And if I were the Republican candidate running for President of the United States, I'd be focused on jobs and job creation. I wouldn't be trying to restrict women's ability to have contraception. And since Rush might not have mentioned it uh, on his show, yesterday was International Women's Day. Um, And if perhaps, uh, Joe, you're one of, or many people out there are among folks who think that every day probably should be uh, listed as Women's (laughs) International Day. uh, uh, Think of it this way, perhaps uh, a day to just focus a little bit more on the struggles and triumphs of women all around the world. And that's going to segue us nicely, I'm hoping, uh, into our next story here, which is the Women's Film Festival. Uh, And uh, what do we got coming up for that? Uh, Launch of the 2012 Women's Film Festival is uh, what's on everybody's mind as March 9th, of course, the opening day. Last week, we were live for the festival's opening reception at the Hooker Dunham, where longtime volunteer Marilyn Bielman talked about the festival's impact. It's a benefit for the Women's Freedom Center, and it's a festival that is just filled with dynamic, wonderful, moving, inspiring films. It all starts at 6.30 p.m. at the Latches with the festival's opening night special event. Let's put the graphic up here, followed by the screening of Carol Channing, Larger Than Life, and then on to a Q&A with NYT's Jerry Stockman about his time working with Carol herself. And I believe we've got the trailer for that. I can hold my head up high before the parade passes Catch Carol Channing tonight as part of 2012 Women's Film Festival or stick around until the latches at 8.45 for dual showings of Tomboy and I Am a Girl. <clears throat> All you need to know about the films, when they show, and how to pay for them at Women Film Festival, all one word, dot org. And uh, there's plenty more screenings tomorrow as the festival continues with films that range from country music to playing chess with Clev- Kev- Kevin Klein. Uh, next, live in Studio B, we're joined by Wyndham County Heat Fund co-founder Daryl Pillsbury. Let's cut to that camera. Daryl, you've been waiting patiently by. How are things? Excellent. Excellent. Glad to be here, guys. Well, uh, maybe we can start uh, just by you uh, introducing the the um, Heat Fund a little bit, maybe for those uh, folks who sure. uh, you know tell people what you do out there, and then we'll get into some of the stuff that you got coming up. Okay. Well, thanks an awful lot, Roland, first off, uh, for letting me... Uh, take a few minutes of the 545 live time. 
Um, well, the Wyndham County Heat Fund was started in uh, 2005 by Richard Davis and myself because we knew there was a lot of uh, heating needs around Wyndham County going unmet. There was a lot of people that were that met uh, the SEVCA requirements, but there was also some that were just falling through the cracks. So we thought we needed to do something about that, and we did. And since then, um, we're in our seventh year. We've raised almost $200,000, give or take, and we've probably helped over maybe uh, 550, 600 families um, with emergency fuel. And that goes as far as even um, with, uh, you know, like cordwood and things like that. We've uh, been lucky enough to be able to even supply people that burn with wood. Uh, this year so far, we've raised uh, just over $40,000 and we've been able to help approximately 100 families stay warm. Um, there's always a need. We've got a couple of applications right now uh, on Richard's desk waiting for um, some more funding to come in. We give 100% of the money that we raise. Um, and in this day and age, it's good to know where your dollar is going. So if you give to the Wyndham County Heat Fund, 100% of that donation goes to a uh, Wyndham County resident um, to provide heat. And what we do is we call their fuel company, we order the fuel and we send it to their house so that we know that they're getting exactly um, what we want them to get. And that's uh, fuel to be able to stay warm. So it's been very successful. We wouldn't be able to do it without the community's uh, help. It's two guys that decided to do something and um, it takes everybody else who has, uh, you know, um, given to us. And that's a lot of, a lot of individual donor, donors, a few um, uh, foundation grants and things like that from like uh, Entergy Vermont Yankee, uh, the Thomas Thompson Trust, the St. Michael's Episcopal Church ladies have given us money um the sunrise uh morning uh rotary uh a lot of people and um you know if you can folks please give and uh, the way to do that is by simply writing a tax tax deductible donation to the Wyndham county heat fund mail it out to 679 weatherhead hollow road in care of richard davis in guilford vermont 05301 or you can simply walk into the brattleboro savings and loan walk up to one of the tellers and say you'd like to make a donation to the Wyndham County Heat Fund and they'll put it right into our account. It's very easy to do and we count on people like you uh, to make that happen. And before I keep going, I just want to throw up, we've got the phone numbers up on the screen here as well, uh, just so people can uh, get in contact. Sevka, of course you and, and Richard, the reason it's, it's your numbers up there is because it's, it's the two of you guys putting that's this right. together. You know, that's, no office, if people, office is out of the house rolling. That's right, it's, yeah. I mean, if people are wondering how 100% of the funds go uh, to people in need, it's because it's, it's a two-man team over there. So and pretty, we do have pretty a commendable. And we do have a fundraiser coming up this weekend which is tomorrow, Saturday, uh, and it's a uh, hot jazz for warm homes. It's a benefit concert featuring the Gypsy Jazz Quartet of Argentinian guitarist Gonzalo Bergara, um, and he's well known. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, March 10th. It, uh, it's, it starts at 8 p.m. Doors will open around 7. It's at the Vermont Jazz Center at 72 Cotton Mill Hill, uh, room 2222. And why are we having it? It's to benefit, uh, like I said, the Wyndham County Heat Fund and also SEVCA. We will be splitting the um, proceeds of this concert. And you can either purchase tickets online at the Vermont Jazz Center at www.vermontjazz.org or by calling area code 802-254-9088. Uh, extension 2. And uh, tickets are also available um, at the door, there'll be twenty dollars for um, everybody, and if you have a ID, a student ID, you can get them for fifteen dollars. So we hope uh, that everybody can go, and we like to thank the sponsors. There's uh, several sponsors of the event, and which you'll be able to see on a lot of posters and stuff. And we'd also like to thank uh, again BCTV for giving us a moment to uh, tell people what we do. Daryl, thanks for coming down on a, on a Friday afternoon, and thanks for all the work you do on this. This is a, a, a huge need, and in, even as spring seems to be just around the corner, this is not over, certainly, for heating needs from community families. So you've gotten a lot of families through the winter. Uh, I know that must feel great, and 
Uh, we sure appreciate you coming down to talk about this. Have fun tomorrow at the fundraiser. Hopefully, uh, anybody watching this out there that needs a little something to do for a Saturday night, uh, wants to help the community out a little, put them together, uh, come on down. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, let Daryl get out of here and uh, get on to his weekend. But when we come back, we've got plenty more stories. We'll throw in our traffic and weather shenanigans and more. All right, thanks. It's all about the body, not about the brain. You all saw the uh, photo from the weekend of Hillary looking so haggard and what, looking like 92 years old. Breast implants, did you have them or not? If you waterboarded Nancy Pelosi, she wouldn't admit to plastic surgery. The fact that media are so derogatory to the most powerful women in the country, then what does it say about media's ability to take any woman in America seriously? Welcome back to 545 Live, the trailer for Misrepresentation, one of the many films part of the Women's Film Festival focusing on the misrepresentation of women in the media. That shows, I believe I've got the title up on the script here, uh, that shows tomorrow 4 p.m. at the Latches as part of the Women's Film Festival. Tickets available at the door uh, and you can still get passes online. Women's Film Festival, all one word, dot org. All right. And with that, it's uh, time to move on here. After Super Tuesday's election, Wednesday saw the swearing in of a new select board. Uh, a new select board that looks suspiciously like the old select board. Alums Chris Chapman, Dick DeGray, and David Gardenstein uh, all got to pull up their old chairs. BCTV carried live the ceremonial first meeting, led by Tom Clerk and Nick Cappy. If you would care to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I can state your name. I, Andrew Christopher Chapman, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute, that I will faithfully execute the duties of select board member, the duties of select board member for the town of Brattleboro, for the town of Brattleboro. So help me God. So help me God. That's it. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back. Next, it may not be the hanging chad of Florida, but Newfane, Vermont's Board of Civil Authority has authorized a recount of the 434 ballots cast for Newfane's three-year select board seat at the request of candidate Chris Williams, who lost by a narrow margin to town clerk Gloria Cristelli at Newfane's town meeting this Tuesday. Select board member John Mack talked about the town's impassioned take on the select board. When you talk about the uh, select board, it's always a very sensitive area. Wrapping the news, Vermont Yankee has again received a clear bill of health from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who this year doubled the number of standard inspections. The NRC's annual assessment letter stated that, quote, through this quarterly assessment process, the NRC has not observed any change in focus or commitment by energy related to assuring safe operations at Vermont Yankee. In addition, the letter says that their findings showed very low safety significance. All right, and to finish out, before we talk briefly about this ridiculous weather we've been having and, of course, the ridiculous traffic, we always have the state has approved a $7.7 .7 million renovation for Brattleboro Memorial Hospital that will, among many things, provide the community with a new, more efficient emergency room. It's really a complete re reconfiguration that really um, uh, meets the needs of what we are seeing now and what we anticipate for the future. BMH Director Steve Gordon earlier this year talking to WTSA's Tim Johnson about the hospital's plans moving forward. And with that, we'll do that traffic weather thing that we always do so well. That's right. All right, uh, let's take a quick look uh, at downtown here. Um, as we wrap up this extended Friday edition traffic report powered by Enrix and Beat the Traffic. It's up behind us on the screen, slightly obscured by this new no. microphone. Let's uh, fold down this here laptop for a second and take a look. I can uh, go a step further, though, and put it up on the screen as we look at downtown. Uh, just so people know, the code orange, uh, heavy traffic, but it is, in fact, moving. Uh, then... Uh, You've got uh, red standstill traffic, and of course green, as you might expect, is good to go. Here's the uh, deadly section of downtown here. High Street to Canal Street, often a solid block of red. But as you get out Putney Road, you can see uh, that things clear up and uh, get into the green. High Street, Western Ave, Canal Street, uh, West, uh, those are all uh, are moving. That We see the orange and 91 traffic goers are good to go. All right, that's our traffic report. Um, we'll uh, try and get a, a little bit more uh, weather in here before we uh, take off for the night. So uh, let's see what, uh, what we can get here um, as well. And uh, let's throw it up. But oh, first, look at that. Let's, uh, before, before we do that, actually, 
Doesn't really matter what order we go in, but BUHS TV is is back in full swing. They do weather themselves, uh, so I want to get their take on the day from early this morning first. Today is going to be a pretty good day. Not as good as yesterday, but still pretty good. Um, and uh, for Saturday, we have a high of 40 and a low of 26, and partly cloudy, but still all right. And we have a high of 57 and a low of 35 for Sunday, but it'll be nice and sunny, so that should be good. And I hope you enjoy your weekend. All right, uh, BUHS TV shows 6.15 today. Normally they show at 6. Of course, Friday with Daryl coming on, we got given an extended slot. So they'll show at 6.15, uh, complete rebroadcast. They show live uh, two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, weekday mornings, excluding Wednesdays at 10.15 a.m. following the rebroadcast of this here 545 Live. Joe, do you want to uh, take a stab at uh, wrapping up this weather with a look at... Uh, well, what do we got there? looks like we got some, uh, I think it's a chance of an inch or two of snow overnight tonight, so don't be surprised if you get up and see another white screen in the morning. Pretty amazing considering I was biking around in a t-shirt earlier today. Yeah, for sure. But by the time we make it through tomorrow night, uh, lows in the lower 20s, uh, the next 10 days solid uh, after that is looking at barely dipping into the 50s. Um, many days in the 60s, you notice 56, 65, 66, and so on and so forth. We're going to have some beautiful weather, and I think spring's right around the corner. So uh, I know if I say that, it'll snow two feet the week after that. That's, but, uh, that's right. We'll take our chances. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's uh, that's about all I got. You can say it's a full lit, as I, I like to say. But uh, we'll wrap with a few more things, including Sunday at 5 p.m. at the River Garden uh, National Nuclear Consultant. Arnie Gunderson will host an open forum on Fukushima and VY. And I'll let you, Joe, take the uh, oh, yeah. the BCTV side of our wrap. All right. And for BCTV loyalists, catch a real Daryl Fest on Channel 8 tonight with the Pulse from Harris Hill 2012 at 10.15 p.m. and Marijuana Resolve with Tucker Corey at 11.30 p.m. All right, uh, for BCTV 545 Ooh. Live, Joe Bushy, Daryl Pillsbury, Frederick Noyes, who's got a birthday coming oh. up on Sunday, Operations Manager, Vlasta Papelka, Content Specialist, Paige Martin, Maria Dominguez, Ian Keel, and everyone else that makes 545 Live so, so special. Happy birthday. Thanks for watching. Good morning, BHS. Today is Friday and a purple day. Um... Back to Matt and Danny. Come out and help FBLA. And most importantly, help your community.